Hi there, I'm Henry T. Casey from Tom's Guide and this is the iPad Pro 2021. It's time to review both the 12.9 and 11 inch models and show how they differ and see which one's right for you. The first thing to note about the iPad Pro 2021 is that this 12.9 inch model is better than the 11 inch model in one major way. It has the Liquid Retina XDR display, which has peak brightness of almost 1600 nits. Like a great tablet display is somewhere in the 400 to 500 nit range. This blows it out of the water, but there's a big asterisk up there. That's only for HDR content and not all applications have HDR support. So when I tried to watch my favorite scene in Birds of Prey, when Harley Quinn lusts over the breakfast sandwich of her dreams, it didn't look that much different at all. That's because the HBO Max app, also the Hulu iPad app, doesn't support HDR. And then when I found HDR capable apps, such as Netflix and Apple TV, I watched some content that support with Dolby Vision, which is an HDR supported format. The thing is, I only noticed a slight difference of brightness on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, and they both looked great. But the good news is that our testing proves out that the 12.9 inch iPad Pro does get a lot brighter. Non-HDR content light gun tests show that the iPad Pro 2021, the 12.9 inch model has an average of 563 nits of brightness. That's practically negligible difference from the 11 inch model, but it's still brighter than the 559 nit iPad Pro from last year. In terms of what you could buy at other models you could buy, the iPad Air 2020 is less bright, 440 nits, and the Galaxy Tab S Plus's Super AMOLED panel is even less bright at 430 nits. But as I said, the iPad Pro gets even brighter. So we use an HDR video to get what the peak brightness would be on this tablet. The 10% and 40% portions of the display rated at 1582 and 1588 nits respectively. That's a multiple of anything you get from any other screen on any other tablet on the market. And it's just really impressive. As for the full screen on HDR, that had a 1251 nits brightness pretty darn good and it's just the kind of thing where if that stuff matters to you if you are editing video constantly and you know the difference between hdr and all the different hdr formats and your eyes are finely tuned and you want your darks and brights to be as greatly varied as possible with the ipad pro's 1 million to 1 contrast ratio the ipad pro 2021 is pretty much the best device you could probably get because it's got realistic color reproduction as well our colorometer gave it a rating of 114.9% on the sRGB gamut. Similar to the 113.1 from the 11 inch model, and more colorful I mean, than the 102.9 rating from the iPad Air 2020. The big thing here is that Samsung's Galaxy Tab S Plus is a lot more colorful at 210.6% of the sRGB gamut. That's because Samsung loves to go for oversaturation. Apple goes for realism. The biggest thing because it's available for both the 12.9 inch iPad Pro and the 11 inch iPad Pro. That's the M1 processor. It's shockingly fast. Um, we said that when the I, when the MacBooks came out last year, just in everyday usage, everything felt faster. Opening applications, opening new tabs, everything appeared and rendered with a neat snappiness. It seemed smoother than ever. And then when I split into multitasking mode, high-res HDR art, a 1080p YouTube video, and uh, over a dozen tabs, everything still stayed smooth. On benchmarks, the iPad Pro's 2021's M1 processor got its biggest wins. That's because it got a score of 7,298 on the Geekbench 5 benchmark test, which beats the iPad Air's 4,200 score and the iPad Pro 2020's 4,700 score pretty handily. Also, it destroys the Samsung Galaxy Tab S Plus's score of 2,910 because the Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 Plus just can't compete with the Apple M1. Because this is an iPad Pro, we looked at a creative app to see what it's like to actually use the M1 in the wild. We take a 4K clip, add a color filter and a transition, and then export it at 1080p at 30fps. The iPad Pro 2021 finished this test in 22 seconds. That beats the 34 second time from last year's iPad Pro and the 27.2 second time from the iPad Air from last year. Design-wise, the iPad Pro 2021 is pretty similar to last year's model. It's just a little thicker at 0.25 inches versus last year's 0.23 inches. That means it's going to fit a little more snug and maybe not perfectly in the iPad Pro Magic Keyboard, but it should still work. Also, at 1.5 pounds and then another 1.5 pounds on top of that with the Magic Keyboard, the iPad Pro is up to 3 pounds heavy, which is about as heavy as the MacBook Pro 2021 and the XPS 13. 
this makes it a little less portable and I mean, if you want an iPad for its lightweight design, you'll probably want to go with the 11-inch iPad Pro, which is 2.4 pounds when docked. And yes, I'm going to talk about cameras on an iPad. Apple's done some good stuff here. Uh, primarily, the 12 megapixel true depth camera that's a selfie camera has a new technology that makes video conferencing even better than before. It's called center stage. It means that the camera will follow you around if you stand up, if you move to the left or right. The camera keeps its focus on you. I tried to test it out and it had a pretty good job of keeping its eyes on me. As for the camera themselves, well, the 12 megapixel and 10 megapixel real cameras take great photos. I amazed my mother when I shot a photo of her green and pink amaryllis. Selfies I shot had a ton of detail, which were mostly great for reminding me how badly I needed to shave. As for battery life, the iPad Pro 2021 impresses, lasting 10 hours and 48 minutes. That's almost two hours longer than the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus's time, and over half an hour longer than the iPad Pro from last year. That said, the smaller iPad Pro, the 11-inch iPad Pro 2021, lasted 13 hours and 42 minutes on the same test, likely because it has a smaller screen to illuminate. Lastly, let's talk about iPadOS. iPadOS is pretty good. It's gotten a lot smarter with Scribble for handwriting detection, and uh, three app at a time multitasking plus picture in picture is pretty good. But with an M1 processor and a great screen, like it goes to a toe with your MacBook now. The next MacBooks may surpass it, but Apple's made an iPad that's deserving of a really powerful operating system. And iPadOS is still boxed into the sandboxing limitations of iPadOS. Applications can't really work together. Do they have to work side by side? But wouldn't it be great if you could use Skype or FaceTime with voice memos to record a podcast or stream an iPad game without a secondary device? If the iPad is expected to replace the Mac, this is the kind of thing that would really help because applications can truly sing in perfect harmony like they do on the Mac. At the end of the day, the iPad Pro 2021 has the biggest performance leaps Apple's made yet in the iPad, and its display quality is second to none. Expensive, though. Sort of probably will need to look at the other Apple iPads to see what's right for you. Some people might want the Air, some people might want the 11 inch especially if uh, HDR isn't a big thing for them. But with its speed and center stage, the iPad Pro 2021 is the best iPad ever. It's just the most expensive one as well. Stay tuned for the rest of our coverage here at LaptopMag.com. This was the iPad 2021, and we'll see you later.